Sorry, with question seven and nine. Okay, all right, good. Okay, okay. so what is this? It's a structural equation model. Very good. So you can t the first thing you can do is tell me that this is a, is a structural equation model. That's exactly right. Good. Nice. Now, what are the things in ovals? Um, that is, um, if you've got a circle, normally we draw them as, a, as an oval uh, or an ellipse, but um, what are they? Latent variables. Latent variables. Sorry? Latent variables. Well done. They're latent variables. That's exactly right. Nice. Good. And what's a, what is a latent variable? Unobserved. Unobserved. An unobserved, An unobserved variable. It's a variable we don't observe. Yep, that's right. We compute it from some observed variables. Nice. All right. Now, in um, this particular structural equation model, how many independent and how many dependent variables do we have? <coughs> that is latent. So I'm talking about the latent variables. How many independent and how many dependent latent variables do we have? I think we have four. Two independent. Four. 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 One dependent. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is it negative? Huh? Sorry. Uh, oh. uh, uh, I think cognitive and family are independent. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the media Yeah. And family have uh, four reasons. Mm -hmm. Good. So another way of driving this, or another way of driving this, um, is you could just have oh, what is it, cognitive. So you could have cognitive and family, and just draw them with a correlation like that. Um, and they're leading, but that's interesting, isn't it? Okay, so family's leading to adjust, um, which is leading to achieve. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then this one here is also leading to achieve. All right, okay, that's right. So, um, all right, so these things, why are they independent variables? These two here, cognitive and family, why are they independent variables? Okay, nicely done. That'll yeah. do. Okay, there is nothing that causes these. Okay, if something caused, if there was some variable x over here that caused these two, then these ones would be dependent variables as well. Okay, but there's nothing out here. All right. So in a structural equation model, an independent variable is just a variable that is not caused by any other variable. These ones aren't caused by any other variable. That's in the model. Yeah. Does, it, does that make sense? Okay, it's just like regression. If you think back to your simple regression with x goes to y, y is x the independent <coughs> variable. Nothing causes x. Okay? X just causes y. Okay? So the thing that does the causing, <laughs> the causal is your independent variable, and the thing that gets caused is your dependent variable. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. That's independent and that's dependent. Independent. Good. Well done. So these ones are both independents. Lovely. And this one is a dependent variable for sure. Okay. Now this one, this one here. Is this a dependent variable? Mediating variable. Yeah, I know it's a mediating variable, but mediating variables are also dependent variables, okay, in one sense. This is a dependent variable with respect to what? Family. Family, exactly, 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 exactly. Nicely done. Um, this is a dependent variable with respect to family, but it's an, uh, an independent variable, if you like with respect to achievement. Now, when something takes on the role of being an independent, you know, a, a, 
dependent variable with respect to some variable and an independent variable with respect to some other variable, then we call it a mediating variable. So a mediating variable is just any variable that gets in the middle. Um, mediating just means in the middle. What is the difference with the moderating? Yeah, good. Well, a moderating variable is a variable that affects the relationship between two variables. So if we had a variable down here that affected the relationship between two variables, then we would call that a moderating variable. But in this model, we don't have a moderating variable. All we've got in this, in this is a mediating variable. Good. There is a line between C and F, that when C and F. What's the meaning of that? Ah, well done, Akash. Nice question. That, when you've got a, a line like that, what does that mean? What do you mean? That means there's a correlation between these things. Okay, so I haven't got to labeling the paths yet. I'll get to that. But let me put it down. That's a correlation between those two variables. Nice. So when we have a correlation between two variables, what does it mean in terms of independent and dependent variables? The dependent, independent variable has a linear relationship. No, oh, yeah, no, that's what correlation is. But when we're talking about it in terms of a model, if that's an independent variable and that's a dependent variable, then it means that causes that. If we've got a correlation, does that cause that? What is the What cause meeting up it was? What, uh, and because what can be affected? Uh, no. The way we talk about it, you're right, so this is complex and this is family. Um, neither of these cause each other. Okay. This doesn't cause this and this doesn't cause it. It's not a causal relationship. It just means they're related, but it's not a causal relationship. Okay. Um, so it doesn't mean, it just means that they share some variance. Okay. But that doesn't cause that and that doesn't cause that. Okay. So when you see a, a line like that, it's talking about a correlation. We have the same one in uh, job resources and job demand. Yeah. There's a line. Yeah, at the front. So. It's typical at the front end of a structural equation model to have a correlation between the two variables. Okay. So because the sorry. Mm. So the, the relation also impact with the, that correlation, like impact of uh, family on the uh, uh, what is it? Sorry, family on that. Okay. Yes. So that will also factor the correlation. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I'm um, depending on what the correlation is. is yeah. yeah, that's right, exactly, exactly right. Yeah, good question, excellent question. Um, if the correlation between these two things just happen to be zero, okay, then the only effect the family on, on that would be from family. But if there's any correlation between <laughs> these two, then the effect on family must come partly from this, mm -hmm. because these two are related. But we don't have any error from the, the You don't have a causal, causal, that's right, you don't have a direct causal um, arrow, causal effect going down there. That's exactly right. We could, but we don't. If we had that, then th this would be strictly a mediating variable between these two. That's right. So let's just keep it at that for a moment. All right, so we have two variables here that have a correlation. Okay. And they have an effect down here. Now, so that's a correlation. Now, what do we call these pathways here? Here they are relations, but what do we call them? Yeah. Call them structural paths. 
traditionally, which is the same as a regression path, okay? Well, same except different. So we call them structural paths. And they're different from regression. How, how are these structural paths, how are they different from regression? In regression, do we have regression between latent variables or observed variables? In regression, do we have a relationship between observed or unobserved variables? Yes. To me, it is unobserved. No. Good try. In regression, ordinary regression, what we really have is the relationship between two observed variables. And the reason that they're observed variables is because we have data on those. We actually have yeah, data on variable X and variable Y. If this is height, you know, if this is weight, we actually have data on those, height and weight. In regression, we uh, have the two variables which has continuous data. Yeah, yeah, they're continuous. And These are continuous as well. Yeah. yeah. But in a structural equation model, uh, what we have is the relationship between the latent variables or unobserved variables, and so we call these paths structural paths to give them a different so structural parts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, what are the structural parts? They demonstrate cost and effect. Uh, okay, well they measure, yeah, 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 they measure cause and effect. Well, okay, they, they measure a causal relationship, yeah, okay. Uh, but what are they? Alright, they're just coefficients just like a regression coefficient. That's all they are, alright? Just like the relationship between X and Y, I should like that, has some sort of regression coefficient here, okay? They're just like regression coefficients. So what can these structural paths vary between? What values? Plus one to minus one. Minus one to plus one. Uh, well, yeah, okay, minus one to plus one. Yeah, that's right, exactly, minus one to plus one. Just exactly like a regression path. Okay. Now, as it turns out, sometimes we can go over one, but, but, but that's, um, uh, but we're not too concerned about those cases just at the moment. So, between minus one plus one, they're just like regression paths. Yeah. And so, what do the what does the weight? Um, and so, we would call these. Um, we would call these, the, the number that goes here, 0.85, what do we call that? If it's a structural path, what would we call that? Coefficient. Structural coefficient. Yeah. <laughs> it's a structural coefficient. Nice. A 
structural path has a structural coefficient, mm -hmm. just like a regression path has a regression coefficient. And what does the structural coefficient tell you? Sorry? Yeah, 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 okay. The, the value of it, it tells you about the strength of the relationship between those two vari variables. Yeah, that's right. Or the strength of the, uh, the strength of the causal effect. You could say that. And see the value, yeah, you'd say the strength of the course of the So, so far what I've dealt with is just the inside of the model here. Latent variables, correlation relationship, causal relationships, independent, dependent, mediating variables, um, structural paths, structural coefficients. Mm. I'm just naming some things at the moment. All right, very good. Now, in this, uh, I might as well just deal with these two ones here. Uh, you don't have to know a lot about that at this stage, but these are the error terms associated with the mediating, uh, associated with the dependent variables. Um, I know that's a mediating variable, but it's also a dependent variable. Okay, so associated with the mediating and dependent variable, that would be probably. That would be a good way to put it in. They're the error terms. And all that means is that we don't measure these latent variables perfectly. Okay, and that error term um, tells us. Um, the error associated with the dependent variables that arises from these things. But don't worry too much about that at the moment. Just all you need to do is just call them the error terms associated with the mediating and dependent variables. That's all you need to know. Um, I'm not going to explain um, why. I'm not going to explain everything about that. Sometimes those error terms are called disturbances. <laughs> So if you want to use that word, um, a disturbance is another name for an error term that is associated with a mediating or dependent variable in a structural equation model. Can also be called noise. Sorry? Noise. Um, yeah, it's a contributor to noise. Yeah. Yeah. So far, so good? Yep. All right, nice. Now, what are these things here around the outside? No, they're not. In fact, in this model, nice, uh, nice pickup, do we have any second order factors? Do we have any second order factors in this model? No. No. Okay, a second order factor is a latent variable caused by other latent variables. Do we have any latent variables caused by other latent variables? Do we have a, sorry, do we have any latent variables that have latent variables as factors? 
12, the answer is none. Okay, let's say we had a just. Um, down here. Okay, uh, let's say that had some factors, some latent factors. Okay, which I'll just call A, B, and C. It doesn't matter what they are. Okay. Then that would be a second order factor. Ah, yeah. yeah, come on in. Oh, thanks, man. Just return your shape. Oh, thanks, mate. Then that would be a second order factor, and they would be first order factors. All right. Mm. Do we have any second order factors in this model? No. No, we don't have any second order factors in this model. There's no ovals that come off any of these. All right. We only have first order factors. Right, these instrument, are instrument observed item. variables. So whenever you see squares in a structural equation model, it means observed variables. Observed variables, very good. Now, what could the observed variables be? Questions. questions, exactly right. Yeah, questions from a survey. They could be, that's exactly right. Uh, typically, they are, they are questions from a survey, um, and questions from a survey are often called items. Yeah. yeah. So you can say questions from the survey or items. Yeah. Um, all they are is they are your observed variables, and in this case, the observed variables happen to be questions or items. Mm. Fine. Good. Now, what are these lines down here? Sorry, going okay so far? Yeah. Okay. All right. What are those lines down there? So let's say. Let's say we've got um, a just down here, and that's measured by. Oh, how many observed variables do I have in the model, by the way? One, two, four, three, seven, ten, twelve. Twelve. I've got twelve observed variables. Exactly. What are these lines down here called? Well, let's just start with that. What are these lines down here called? Factor and this is They're called factor loadings. does the arrow, why does the arrow come this way? When we're dealing with a regression path, or a structural path, um, then the arrow goes that way. Why are the arrows coming this way? Okay. When an arrow goes that way, it means that causes that. All right. When the arrows go that way, it means that, that causes that. All right. Now that that's pretty critical down here. Um, I'm just calling them L in and O. It doesn't matter what I call them. The uh, the items, the variation in the items is caused by this underlying factor. That's the way the model works. So we say that the latent variable causes variation in these observed variables. 
That's why the arrow goes that way. Okie doke. Now, when we have a structural path, it means the relationship between these two variables. Okay, so if I just have point 0.9 there, it doesn't really matter. Um, what are the factor loadings? Zero. Yeah, 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 I know they can go from zero to one. Um, okay, what uh, what are the factor loadings? The relationship between the loading variable item and the variable. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. A structural path is just the relationship between two latent variables. A factor loading is the relationship between a latent variable and the observed variables that are meant to measure that latent variable. to what? What values can the factor loading take on? Zero to one. Zero to one. Zero to one. That is right. And the reason it's zero to one is that this latent variable either causes no variance in this observed variable or 100% of the variance, okay? But it can't cause negative variance, okay? You, you know, this cannot cause less, you know, whatever variance is in this thing here, this observed variable here, this can't account for less than zero. <laughs> it, can, it can account for zero, but it can't account for less than zero. All right? So factor loadings go between zero and one. Good. And one means a perfect, you know, a, a perfect relationship, if you like. Um, the late, what, well, you tell me. What does a factor loading of one mean? Well, something like that, yeah. It means that all of the variance in that observed variable is accounted for by the latent variable. So this is a measure, the factor loading, if you like, is a measure of the variance accounted for. in the observed variables. So what does the factor loading zero mean? No, it means that the latent variable explains no variance in the observed variable. Latent variable explains, you know, which is very unusual, okay? You, you, you're never going to get a factor loading in zero unless you've got a real problem somewhere in your model. Um, okay, all right. Most of the time, of course, a factor loading is somewhere in the middle. It explains a certain amount of variance. In the, uh, in the observed variable. factor loadings and that they measure the relationship between the latent variable and the observed variable. Mm. Uh, and then one last thing before we have a little break. These things, and I'll come back to it later, these things, when you see these arrows down here, 
that you do in your exam paper, what are they? What are they? See these little arrows down here? Yep. What are they? Okay. They are the error term associated with the observed variable. So what we did is we had an error term associated with the latent variables. Now we've just got some error terms associated with the observed variables. <clears throat> no, it's measurement error in the model itself. It's no, got nothing to do with the questionnaire. Uh, they might show up as error in your model, um, but this is actually statistical error. Just like your regression line, has got an error term? Yeah. Okay. These have error terms. If okay. they have it's a factor loading of uh, one, is there a error? The error will be zero. Zero. That's exactly right. Ah. Well done. Uh, yeah. Factor loading of one, yeah. error term zero, of course. No error. One minus factor loading. In fact, your factor loading, strictly speaking, your factor loading um, is equal to one minus your error squared. Whoops. Oh, um, so whatever ever your error term is squared, um, then your factor loading is one minus that. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, that's a very good question. I won't answer that just at the moment because we're past two and it's a long answer, or a longish answer, okay, all right. Um, it's got to do with R and R squared. It's the same, it's the same pattern. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a break. Uh, come back at two.